This episode is sponsored by the Clubhouse Abuja. My fun experience is just that family mentality. I know I'm sounding like Dominic Toretto over fast. <laughs> fast and furious, but it's just family. everybody, if you think about it, no, yeah. even we we sat down at seven during your open mic and spoke like we have been in touch forever, you yeah. know. And that is that atmosphere that was created. Um, some people will still be snobbish, of course, but majority of people understand that only we can understand what we went through yeah. in that experience. And even 10 years later, 15 years later, people that are going there now, it may not be the same experience, but it is a Loyola experience. Yeah. The Nigerian educational system is generally in the gutter. It pains me to say, Every day it hits a new low, and it fills me with woe. Mostly because I'm going to have kids someday and there's not an institution in this country that is equipped to give my kids the standard of education they need to be the best version of themselves. Except one, Loyola Jeju College. Loyola Jeju College is a co-ed secondary school in Abuja, run by the Society of Jesus. It is the most prestigious and coveted secondary school in West Africa. Its academic and athletic excellence have been well documented since it enrolled its first 100 students in 1996. It is that school that most Nigerian children dream of getting into. It is that school that every Nigerian parent desperately wants their child to attend, if for no other reason than bragging rights. Every year, thousands of kids from around the world write the entrance exam and every year, only 100 of the brightest minds are selected after a rigorous selection process. My guests, Sumkili Awakalu, and I are part of that select class, and we spend the next hour unpacking the things we experienced and how they informed the men we are today. We pull back the curtains, revealing our most honest opinions on the variety of experiences we had as children in that space, such as how the school was run, the crushing academic pressure, judgmental teachers, bullying, and the tragic December 10 plane crash that killed 60 of our classmates. Fun fact, yesterday marks the 16th anniversary of that day, and this episode is done in their honor. Regardless of your Loyola experience, there's a sense of pride that comes from knowing you are one of 100 that attended that most coveted school in Africa. And because the school is so small, there's only a small cult of people in the world who share and understand the unique triumphs and trauma that come with it. We unpacked that for y'all. Many have always wished and wondered what it's like to attend Loyola, to walk those hallowed grounds located on the outskirts of town. It's just unlike anything out there if you know what's up. And let me just say, you had to be there. This episode doesn't do it justice, but it addresses very important issues about how we treat children in school. This was also the last episode I recorded at Vintage Cafe before the owner, my friend Sophia, passed away in September. Sophia, you are missed sorely and may all the souls we've lost rest in peace amen my name is rodney omokache and this is the young god How's it going, man? How you day? Man. Long, 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 long time. Long since time, yeah. Prior to, I saw you at the... At seven. Open mic, yeah. But prior to that, I've seen you once before as well. Somewhere in Mintama. Somewhere in Mintama. But before that, we're talking 10 years, maybe. 10 years. Were you at the Loyola reunion? No. You weren't? No, I wasn't. Bruh. Let me bust your head. You know who's on the podcast also? Who? Oh. Catchy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually saw that. I actually saw that. Uh, it's scrolling through my timeline the other day. I actually saw that. So that was cool. She's, she's very inspiring, honestly. It's one of those things where you read about people that that go through things and are inspiring, but to actually yeah. know that person. Right. In fact, that year, she used to sit beside me. So this was my desk, and mm. my desk was over there. So it's pretty, pretty cool. 
Okay. Let's let's take it from the top. Yeah. We're gonna get to all those all those things. Yeah. But first of all, what do you do, man? I don't even know what you do. <laughs> Tell people what you do. Okay. Um, so that's a good one. Mm. By training or by profession, yeah. I'm an economist. So a lot of that has to do with um, just understanding the economy and trying to just basically supply and demand, whether it's market based whether it's behavioral, whether it's development. Mm. Uh, but right now I work with the, I work with the office of the vice president. Uh, I'm a special assistant to the president on economic research and data analytics. So crunching the numbers, making That's it make much. sense. Yeah. How did you learn that? <laughs> <laughs> um, how did I learn it? Man, it's just God. <laughs> Just an application for this guy. It's okay. It's okay. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So one of the things that we have in common is that we both went to Loyola. Yeah. And I've always wanted to do an episode about my time there. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of gems and stories that yeah. people on the outside would love to, you know, know like because oh, yeah. that was like a cult. Yeah. Going to that school. Yeah. So um, what class were you in? What class of what year? What oh, class? Uh, so I finished in 2006. So class of 06. Class of 06, yeah. And I'm class of 07. Yeah, class of 07, yeah. Mm. So what, what do you appreciate the most and what do you hate the most about that place? Wow. Mm-hmm. How long do we have? <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, let me start with appreciation. I mm. think it's one of those schools that try to make sure that you're well-grounded. Do you get what I mean? In terms of extracurricular activities, games, mm-hmm. um, what was it, clubs on Saturday, was it? Yeah. Um, and then just generally kept you, kept your head focused. I had some friends from primary school who went to like A-Hall mm-hmm. and Darwin, and I'm not saying they're bad schools, but they're a bit more liberal. And you kind of learn things faster than you should. So I know in Loyola, they try to, with going to mass every day and trying to keep you focused on your education and prioritizing that, um, I definitely appreciated that. And the fact that everybody that comes into your year, Mm -hmm. like nobody else can come in. Once you start from JS1, all the way to SS3, you're with the same crew. Yes. So you kind of, you forge that bond. So a lot of my friends now are still people that I met back there. Mm. On the on the bad side, I think they they try to alter reality a little bit with the mm. Wayne Mona Matthews. By the way, yeah. Mona Matthews were this um, generic shoe brand, yeah. sandal brands that they yeah. give us to wear, so that kids not flex on other yeah, kids yeah. with other like type yeah, of shoes. Yeah. So at that point in time, there were things like ACGs and other trackers that we yeah. used to call it. But Mona Matthews was a designer. Which was good, mm. but uh, they made every single person in the school wear those same. Basically, they used our school fees money yeah. to contract a shoemaker in Nigeria, somewhere yeah. in Nigeria, sure, yeah. to create uniform shoes, the ugliest motherfucking shoes you ever see. Yeah, male and female, they were unisex. So. <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> They try to alter reality a little bit with the mm. Wayne Mona Matthews. Mm. You can't wear designer stuff, don't bring in, to try and make sure everybody was equal. Yeah. But the actual fact is that in life, nobody's equal because you're with that false sense of equality and then you come out of Loyola and say, oh my God, there's a disparity or there's a, mm. uh, an inequality amongst things. Um, so that is, the, that is the core thing. And I know in discussions with a lot of alumni, with some alumni, there's some PTSD type thing, just the way some things, some cool guys versus not cool guys, um, strong guys versus not strong guys. Somebody just sits down somewhere and say, oh, this guy is stronger. Nobody has fought to. Yeah. This one is stronger than you just goes, okay. Like for me, I was always on the smaller side. So it's yeah. kind of like, you're always at the bottom of the pecking order. Yeah. And luckily me, I have a strong mind so, and I have a sharp mouth. So oh, yeah. I was always able to just get away with things. But I remember when uh, a teacher jacked me up like, I, I think I was just misbehaving. By your color, right? Like, By your neck, in SS1. Yes. Right. And I'm thinking back now, I was 14 years old, you're a grown man. Jacking up a kid. 
you understand what I mean? Because yeah. in that moment, it's fight or flight. I was like, right, right, right. Should I rock this guy? I will be expelled. <laughs> Yeah. So already there's no other option. It's like they, they get to do what they want to do. Yeah. Whether it's sergeant, I remember um sergeant the way he used to chase kids out of out of class, no out of the hostels uh, before um evening study hall or I remember when Mr. Boyner's fought with one guy, Jojo, yeah, yeah, or yeah. beat up some other people. When you think back about at that, you're just like Look, we were kids. The oldest person there was probably 17 years old. Mm. So you're forcing us to grow up faster than we should. And then when we actually get to the real world, we're like, oh, right, we're still kids. Mm. But for me, the way I just dealt with a lot of things, until I speak to somebody who's experiencing their own trauma, then I'm like, right, I didn't find that. I just packed it in. I was just like, okay, it's part of life. Yeah. You get what I mean? You move on. So that's that's the bad side I can think about now. But overall, I think it's an awesome experience. In fact, there's a colleague of mine right now whose kids are in Loyola. And it's pretty much the same experience that we had 15, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's important. You know, the thing about it is that we just, we just carried on with it. Whatever it is you're going through. I know my first year, I came 98 or something, and mm -hmm. we're 105. And I'm coming from where I was first in my my primary school all the time. Yeah. So there's a huge culture shock. So I think that's also part of the problem with with some schools. From a tender age, you're putting a lot of pressure on a kid. Mm. You have to pass. You have to excel in this. So besides that, I think it was a I think it was a good experience. Like now looking back, yeah, I would disagree with the with the with the Mona Matthews thing a little bit because. I mean, at the time, I was like, I don't want to be wearing this shit yeah. and looking like everyone else. I want you yeah. to stand out and do my yeah. thing, yeah. you know. But at the time, I think they didn't know how to manage, you know, the fact that there was an obvious disparity in wealth between certain kids and yeah. other kids. Yeah. You know, those that were on scholarship and those who were like, their parents could afford the thing. Yeah. You know, and bro, the flexing in Loyola was yeah. crazy. You have yeah. to know. Yeah. The yeah. boobos, the chains, yeah. the yeah. everything. Yeah. Social will still come and you still... So that's you where know, I'm coming ACGs. In. Yeah, that's what I'm coming <laughs> in. I'm not saying that it was not a good idea. I'm saying that... It was, it was poor execution. Yeah, it was poor execution because at the end of the day, there will still be times where you know who is who on visiting day. Yeah. Or on socials, yeah. or when the term ends, you still know who right, it's who. Right. Or even by somebody's surname, when you now go on vacation, you know, ah, oh, wow, this person is deputy governor's daughter. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I think when you, this is my own ideology, I think when you present the facts as it is, mm -hmm. but also talk about contentment and lack, don't compare yourself with right. anybody. Do you okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. But you know what? That's actually spot on. Yeah. Because if that carried on long enough, it'll give you that sense of everyone's supposed to be equal. Yeah. Not you being able to deal with your own insecurities. You understand what I mean? Right. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Because. Well, now you can see in the world now there's a lot of that going on yeah instead of people dealing with their security yeah they're trying to force equality yeah oh, oh, they're trying to say oh everybody should be equal but even if you look at your fingers where well, that statement of all fingers are not equal mm. however each of these fingers have a role that they are playing yeah. and most of them cannot work without the other one yeah. so where you may be materially poor there are things that you you do that the materially wealthy can't do, cannot do, and yeah. that now makes the ecosystem work properly. And if you're content with that fact, that okay, there are things that I bring to the table mm. that Rodney may not necessarily bring to the table, it won't really be an issue. And that's why a lot of people are struggling. There's more, um, there's more of a toll being taken on people's mental health now because. A lot of the technology that we have across to us gives us that vision of comparison. If you look at social media, if you look at Instagram, if you look at TikTok, oh, why is my TikTok not as cool as this person's own? Mm -hmm. You just have to be able to, and that's another side. Some people have grasped it and said, okay, look, man, my TikTok is going to be hilarious TikTok. Mine is going to be beauty. Do you get what I mean? And it all combines to make mm. it better. Having this relentless pursuit pursuit of academic excellence yeah. especially competing with other schools yeah right it was and to be fair sure to be fair 
they tried to balance it out because there was also like the day though because even in sports we're, we're super competitive in yeah, sports yeah you know so you know what right now it's so funny how things that happen or the way nurture mm. carries on in life right now we're still very competitive amongst our crew at least my friends mm. but that's com- not not competition as in violent competition but it's like oh I don't want you to yeah out. and that comes from that past the other people when my other friends that were not in Leila they're like why are you guys always arguing you know, or why are you guys always in competition but you can't understand that this is where it is so you, do you remember what you were like when you were there? I can't really remember. I think that I'm essentially still the same. A bar maturity and bar mm. a few things. Um, I had a problem with certain types of authority. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the academic staff that were not le- le- leading by example right, were right, expected right. us to to do all the right things. Mm. Um, always being I I always used to be punished for little things oh you just talk in class or something rather than get to the root of things it was always punishment, punishment yeah. oh you're going to sweep the gutter you're going to and these things have ramifications and guess what what that did for me rather than make me change made me worse because mm-hmm. I'm like worst case scenario you call me on report yeah. do you get what I mean and that's I'm still kind of like that, obviously within reason. Where I'm just like, yeah, I'm still kind of like that, with, but within reason. So I still remember how I was. I know I was very, I was very mouthy because I was a small guy. You know, I used to, I used to use my mouth to defend myself all the time. I remember running away from a student. I wanted to beat the hell out of me. After I spent the whole siesta <laughs> abusing him, I ran. I was, what, what was I? Was I SS2? I can't remember. So I still remember. I think it's very difficult as human beings to to go 180 degrees. Mm-hmm. You can move slightly. If you're a bad person, you move slightly to the good. Or if you're a good person, you move slightly to the bad. But essentially, your core is the same. Yeah. For me, I think I remember very, very vividly because a lot of what happened to me in Loyola informed my my life. Because I remember, you know, it was one of those places where I wish I had a big and another brother mm. to like guide you, to guide me. Yeah. Because I was like, whatever you were, I was times ten. Yeah. But I was always getting in trouble. Yeah. You remember? You, yeah, I was, yeah, of course. Roy, 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 you. Yeah. <laughs> Roy, yeah, it's one of those names that you know. There, there are a few names that are like bad boys yeah. that you know. But again, like I said, when you think back and say, okay, what is it that Roy used to do? When you think about it now, mm-hmm. as a grown-up, do you understand? What, what, what were you Just doing? being a kid. You're just being a kid. And rather than, of course, there has to be some punishment. There has yes. to be some punitive measures. But mm. you also have to think about it in terms of, guys are kids man so even us it, it, we, those punishments you mean used to make us put some people in certain buckets oh yeah. Roy yeah. or oh, whoever yeah. this you bucket them and then you will not know that it's until you meet those people afterwards they'd be like Rah. you you try to still put them in that box but then you realize yeah. that we're kids then, we're kids it's, then. it's a whole different I think that's another thing that we need to mention here as one of the like flaws of the way the system was there. If you remember, they had a way of making it seem like all you were there was all you're ever gonna be. Yeah. And a lot of kids believe that Mm -hmm. for a school that was supposed to that that was built on service of God and others, that was not very godly or or, or, or Christian. Yeah. In that sense. That that they that that was fucked up. Yeah. You know. I agree with you, but I think it's not even a you know, Loyola is a microcosm that is part of the macrocosm yeah. because those Jesuit ideas actually came from outside. So when the first staff in 1996, mm. they obviously, like father, all those fathers and all those brothers that were there, mm. they came with their own idea. But you still have to get Nigerians to run stuff, yeah. whether it's in the kitchen, whether it's in the hostels, whatever. So it's... It's the way Nigeria is. Yeah, you look at a small yeah, boy, yeah. he's being a truant, he's doing the normal things that kids do. They're like, you're never going to amount to anything. Some people turn that and use that as fuel. Yeah. But 
for majority of people, that's the reason why they now falter yeah. a, a long life. So it's very understandable if there's some people who those things, ah, you can never amount to, because we always hear the stories of, mm. oh, my, Ronaldo, my teacher said football will never make me eat. Now, look at me. Yeah. But we don't hear the stories of, my, my teacher said that I will never eat, and really I'm not eating, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that messed with our psyche, you know? Mm. Nigerians were not quick to understand mental health. We're not quick to... There's a certain type of pressure you can take as Rodney that I can't take. If you live in Abuja, the clubhouse is one of the places I recommend for a good time. Apart from the restaurant, they have a gym, a large pool, outdoor sitting, indoor sitting, poolside sitting, kiddies playground, everything. It's perfect for all kinds of events. Friday nights are for live music too. Use the On God promo code to get one day swimming pool access and a drink of your choice on the house. Visit at the Clubhouse Abuja on IG to plan your next date. Loyola as a symbol of Nigeria, you know, the things that we face there mm. have somewhat made us who we are. Yeah. Some positive, some negative. Of course. And that is Nigeria as well in a nutshell. Mm. Some people go through life. In fact, I'm reading a book by Jay-Z and it's just talking about the art of the hustle mm. and how you can view America from Jay-Z's eyes. He came up as a crack dealer. But there are also a lot of people on that Marcy project that didn't come out of Jay-Z. Yeah. Same thing with, with Loyola. And there's a lot of expectation. When you meet somebody and say, I went to Loyola, like, oh, wow, you must be to this day yeah and I'm like how do you answer this must I be those are the pressures that we faced as 9, 10, 11 year olds when we first entered there but you know what you know what uh, when I left Loyola mm-hmm. I will say that going to other schools because when I le- when I graduated mm-hmm. I moved to South Africa mm-hmm. and I went to I did like one year of college in, in of high school in, Loyola, in South Africa because I was too young to enter uni straight away mm-hmm. So as a 17-year-old, I had to do like another year, get to 18, then mm-hmm. enter. So while I was there, everything just seemed easier. Yeah. My, I was like, I felt so confident. Yeah. You get, so I feel like in that way, Loyola really did give me, even, even before I even moved out, just being a Nigerian, a Nigerian child mm. who was in Loyola mm. among my peers and knowing that Guy, only 100 people a year get to enter that school. Yeah. Only 600 kids are there at any given time, yeah. at most, in yeah. the school, which means that like, many are called, few are chosen. It's yeah. that kind of vibe. Yeah. You know what, like, who you are. As yeah. a, you know, forget whether you're there on scholarship or you're there because your parents were able to yeah. push you through. Yeah. You know that you are part of the chosen few in the country. Yeah. So that really gives like, it's, even if the pressure is fucked up in yeah. there, within it, when you come yeah. out, there's a yeah. confidence boost. Yeah. Because whatever pressure that was in there, like, the world is pisses compared yeah. to it. If you think about yeah. it, like yeah. the shit that you see in the world, I felt like I was ready in yeah. a way. Yeah. You know, so when I got to SA and I was among like white kids for the first time yeah. and even like, like low-key racism, yeah. like stuff like that, I was, I felt like, do you all know who I am? Yeah. Do you know where I'm from? Yeah. They'd be surprised I can speak English in a way. Yeah. They would be surprised I would, I would greet them good morning. Like, yeah. like, did you greet me? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you get that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> so there were some advantages to that. Yeah. The reunion was in 2015. Mm. That's like eight years. eight years. Yeah. So I came back to Loyola for yeah. that. Yeah. Bro, and what you said about them putting us in boxes, yeah. it shows how deep it was because when you go back there, the teachers are literally surprised to see that you have grown. Yeah. That this rough and tumble kid is now like a man and is yeah. now has like calmness and composure and self possession. Yeah. yeah. Like their minds are blown. Remember in Okela, Mr. Yeah. Polinus, all them guys, they were surprised to see this guy that was always on report and yeah. almost got expelled. Yeah. He's now, you know, coming yeah. to give, I gave the keynote, one of the keynote speeches at the reunion actually. Yeah. Yeah. You get that kind of thing. Yeah. So it just shows, so in my mind I was like, damn, you guys really believe this thing. Oh. Yeah. Not only did we believe it, they believed yeah. as they were telling us. Yeah. And that like shows the flow of the Nigerian system itself. Not even yeah. Loyola itself, because yeah. it's like you said. Nigerian system, yeah. yeah. No, definitely. I think judgment comes naturally to us. Mm-hmm. You see somebody, beard gang, like, or high hair, or dreads, or tats, and immediately 
you have placed them in a box yeah. to be surprised yeah. if they are not what you already put them in a the box to be. Yeah. As opposed to coming with an open mind, okay, yeah, you have some tats, you're, you're dreaded, and you come and you're an astrophysicist, okay, no problem, no surprise, you get what I mean? So we put ourselves in that position to be surprised. And you, I think in general, man, you just have to, you just have to mm -hmm. own your stuff. I'm never going to come out and say, oh, I'm, I'd never misbehaved or yeah. whatever the case may be. Yeah. The, that's, that, that's part of who I am. That was part of my exploration. That was part of me understanding who I was. Mm. And I wouldn't trade the experience in Loyola for so anything else. Because I had very great memories there. Mm -hmm. I, I met a lot of good people and I, and I got a very good foundation. That's like, if there's anything that scared kids the most in that yeah. school, is the bullying it was crazy. Yeah. Like, it was not level, bro. Yeah. You know what it is? I think that there was bullying for sure, but mm -hmm. compared to what I used to hear outside, I mean, when in my first year, I don't think I ate chicken on Saturday the whole year, because there's something we used to do called, I like your food, you cross your hands. If somebody comes and catches you with your hands uncrossed, you say, I like your food, oh, I'm taking your chicken on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I lost one of my seniors, who's a good friend of mine now, yeah. uh, Basti, I lost his, his boots. And he, he didn't even do anything to me, but that, lost his soccer boots, and that, that paranoia that, oh my God, this guy could do something to me. But in general, I don't think the bullying was as bad. I think a lot of, it was bad, old guy. For me personally, for, you, yeah. for me personally, <laughs> I think that I had a I had a way of because the thing about it is that I think that somebody can only bully you, or some people, normal people, will bully you. Maybe when you're proving resistance or all those things, mm -hmm. I think my way of dealing with it was trying to be friends with oh. the strongest seniors in Zebia House, right, right. make sure they're on my side. Donald, Hamza, Lamo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, okay, yeah. all those guys. I made sure we were guys. Like, oh, I can't remember everybody's name, but yeah. when I see my Xavier seniors, they know I'm grateful. Yeah. And those guys already made sure that nobody else, even if you're in Connolly, even if you're in Loyola, yeah. even if you're in Regis, you're not going to bully me. Yeah. And what happened was that even when I went to senior secondary, I don't think any junior can come and say I bullied them. Of course, mm. go and get me water from the Kelvinator. Yeah. Of course, fetch water for me. No more Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, honestly, I can't forget all those things. So I remember there's a guy, there's a senior in my hostel in in Xavier House, and there was a guy that was in your set. Yeah. Um, and the senior told him go and hang my towel on the line. Mm. When we went for study hall, that senior went and took the the towel that that junior hung for him from the line, sent it home on visiting day, and punished that boy all through that year because he said he lost his towel. But that one was a clear. Everybody that is listening and went to Leila knows who I'm talking about. That one was a clear bully. And there are a lot of people that are waiting for him on site. <laughs> They've not forgotten about it. I'm not advocating for that, but that one was just so I can remember some clear wickedness. I was in the the sixth set, the yeah. very the first six sets, and imagine meeting those Patrick Gardners, yeah. those those elders, yeah. you know. I think they were the oldest set of seniors we ever had. Yeah. Because those guys were like men, like maybe they're yeah. 20, yeah. 19 at yeah. the time. But to put that into perspective about how that was them just learning, I see a lot of the guys in first set, mm. a lot of guys in second set, mm. a lot of guys in third set, because I think third set is the Wasco. Mm. Yeah. They're all chilled. Do you get what I mean? No, yeah, it was course. a learning curve for them yeah. as well. I don't think there's anybody that's going to be like, of course, you didn't talk to everybody, so you can't meet everybody and say, oh, let's be friends. But in terms of if you do approach them and say, ah, how are you, Tosin Disu? Like I see Tosin Disu was in first set mm. all the time and he's cool to me despite four years or five years mm. age difference. So for me, I think the way I look back at it is like they were learning, man. Yeah. And a lot of people bring home traumas to school when you don't have right, uh, you right. don't have um, midterm you don't have anything once you come into the local jail for children you are there for three months yeah. think about the psychological impact of that some people are coming from homes where they are struggling financially where their parents are fighting 
they've experienced some loss, those kind of things, and then you come and put some us abuse. in a melting pot, some abuse, come and put that in a melting pot here, where it's the same people, day in, day out, mm -hmm. year in, year out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would definitely cause some kind of chemical reaction. Hmm. That's, a, that's a very nice observation. Yeah. Because some of those, at that time, some of those guys were not normal. Yeah. But, and this is not even to like, to judge them. Mm -hmm. But looking back on the things they made us do, yeah. bruh, do you know, I was doing, one time, I was getting, being punished. They put a rubber band, you know this rubber band? Mm -hmm. Over my head, mm -hmm. to my neck. <laughs> <laughs> and they pulled it. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> these guys are not the real yeah, kids. Yeah, you know, you know. I don't know what it is. We have to. It's something that has to be studied. Do you get what I mean? Because there's nothing that can't be transferred to future. So if you look at maybe the state of Nigeria or the state of Africa, mm. there may be some psychological impositions that have been placed on you that cause you to act a certain way. Mm. Why is it that when we're driving on the road, everybody's crazy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's think back and say, okay, what are the behaviors? And then also think in terms of how do we adapt things to our behaviors? So, yes, traffic lights, this is just a random example. Yes, traffic lights work elsewhere. But in Nigeria, for some people, traffic lights is a suggestion. Maybe there's a different contraption that might work in Nigeria instead of a traffic light. Because mm. we are crazy anyway. Mm. Or road road markings. Nobody's going to stay in between that. Yeah, 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 so maybe, yeah, yeah. rather than make the road markings straight, you make it zigzag. <laughs> so that, yes, you're enjoying yourself. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> so, it's the same thing for me. I think a lot of what I've learned over the last 10, 15 years is there's a link to everything. So if, if I behave a certain way, it can be explained by something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By nature, by nurture, something can explain that behavior. I think also the, the teachers. Yeah. So it was, I think it was also transferred aggression because yeah. the teachers would do their own bullshit. Yeah. And those seniors would come and find juniors to come and do, do bullshit, that too. bullshit too. And then we, as when we become seniors, we now do We're it. We're like, ah, we yeah. suffer those. We so suffer, we so to, you get, yeah. yeah. And you have to put it in context for those teachers. I don't know how much they were earning. Do you understand? Then you come and stay here with pesky kids. Away from and, civilization. Yeah, and some of it is them looking at these kids and knowing these guys are privileged. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. These guys are the smartest kids. Oh, yes, we're your teachers, but we know that we don't have the same kind of intellect that you have. Mm. I mean, if you look at people that were doing 1,600 over 1,600 in SATs, Right. not necessarily only the way the teachers taught to yeah. there's some natural intelligence yes, yes, yeah. that came so I think that's why overall I'm very forgiving there are people that are not as forgiving about their experience in Loyola as so I am take it so personal yeah. man like I, I remember my, one of our group chats man mm. this people was like some of them were like they blocked they blocked it out they repressed it yeah. you know how deep it is yeah. say they repressed some of the trauma from, from yeah. that school yeah. and I feel like you cannot grow as a person you cannot be your best self if you have repressed trauma if yeah. you have things you haven't dealt with yeah so i think one of the first things i did when i got out of the school was i actually like try to deal like i I, re I realized because i hated that i was like the least in the school like mm. guy you remember paul alade mm -hmm. paul alade was he was a paraplegic for most of his time there i think he had civil cell so he mm -hmm. dealt with a lot of things bro i was like Naruto, you know, do you know Naruto? No, I don't. Know. Oh my God! Not be like this. I was picked last on the soccer field yeah. after Paul Alade. Yeah, that's how you know yeah. disregarded I was. Yeah, in that school, and by by both my fault. Yeah, and again the maturity of kids in general. Yeah. So when I left Loyola, you know, I was like, damn. I know I'm not a piece of shit. Yeah. And I don't want to like betray like that. Yeah. And so I said to like mature. You get that kind of yeah. thing. So my experience there kind of informed yeah. my, you know. Well, this is the this is the good this is the good story of that. Yeah. There are a lot of people that I can't think of any, but there could be somebody that is out there that they treated like a piece of shit and self worth is is so low. I'm not a I'm not a fan of that kind of thing. I believe that. As much as I know everybody's not equal and everybody does not have the same gifts, you can't belittle anybody because, especially because 
that today does not decide tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You understand? I'm sure there are a lot of people that look at Jeff Bezos, even if you look at his pictures now and say, it's going to say, Thomas, he's not going to amount to anything. Look at him, he's come out, buff guy, going to the going to the edge of space. So that judgment is within our veins. I'm not going to say I don't judge, but that judgment is within our veins. And we need to we need to curb that we need to kick that we need to look at people especially kids and say look you can be whatever you want to be yes you're doing this truancy now you're being naughty but you always have the chance to change and say you're gonna be better i'll tell you a story yeah recently there was a kid in my neighborhood right yeah who is super restless always running around doing all kinds of stuff and then one time he purposely scratched my car, right? And I was mad. I was like, what the fuck? You know, I'm gonna like go tell his parents, his parents would like maybe even like pay for the shit and like fuck up the kid or something. I was mad. But then the kid came and he was like very apologetic, he was begging, he was, you know, because he knows his parents would like fuck him up. And then at that moment I could see myself in him. Yeah. That's some shit I would do at his yeah. age. Yeah. And I would not want, because I know the adults then, when I was a kid, they would definitely go and take it over my yeah. parents. Yeah. And I know how, like, that's another level of abuse yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, you know what, let me, let me, you know, try something here. Yeah. So, I made the kid feel like I was going to do it. I yeah. made him, he was so contrite, so like, yeah. please, sir, please, please, yeah. please. I was very, he was a very nice black kid, yeah. but he was reckless and mischievous in that way. Yeah. So I could see myself in him in that way, because yeah. I knew that it wasn't, he was just a kid. Yeah. So I said, okay, you know what, I'll make him think I'm going to do it, yeah. but I never did it. Yeah. And to God be the glory, this kid never did that thing again. Yeah. He was so well behaved. Anytime yeah. he would see me, he was always like, you know, very, yeah. I could see like, me giving him that grace, yeah. he took it on the chin. You get that kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. So, if I had gotten that a lot of times as yeah. a kid, that would have been so good for yeah, my, that's, for my that's, yeah. that's actually a great point. And, and I think that has informed the way I deal with people or I deal with, whether it's kids, whether it's adults. Yeah. When you look at somebody and you try to put yourself in their shoes, yeah. You will not be rash. As the generation now mm -hmm. who is in power, we need to we need to look at some of these things and say, how can we be different? You know, Bro. how can we be different from the way we were raised? Before we leave this bullying thing, yeah. One thing I'll say is that um, I don't think, like knowing what what I know now, even though there were extremes of it. I can see the place for it. Yeah. Because, man, experiencing that stuff makes you, it toughens you up. Yeah. And it makes you not want to do the same. Yeah. If, you, if you're really paying attention. Yeah. I can imagine a situation where um, if it was so, like, totally abolished yeah. and everything was made to be um, easy peasy, everything was kumbaya and loyola, you know, there's some things coming out into the world, you may have to deal because there are bullies out in the world yeah, and no one can tell them, you know, jack shit of course you know but having experienced that it builds some kind of like inner toughness mm -hmm. you know because like the worst possible thing you can have you could have experienced has happened yeah and now you're like you're built for yeah. it I, yeah. bro, that's how i that's how that's i like a, try to compartmentalize that's it a very that's a very positive angle to look at it from some of these things are necessary you know mm -hmm. just like what you're saying there's a place let's not call it bullying there's a place for the hard hand mm. there's a place for the stick and there's a place for the carrot yeah. we just need to know how to balance both yeah there's, there's a place for being able to see that they are messed up people you need to be able yeah. to know it exists yeah because and that's why you think of like a lot of mental health that a lot of Gen Zers face now yeah it's like they grew up in such perfect environments yeah. and then they meet the world yeah. and then they cannot deal with the reality of it yeah. you know they grow up you know being taken care of yeah. any small thing your parents to come and defend you yeah. you're in this place where um, you know the prince, everybody is just creating all this like space is, is where it's 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 so orderly yeah and then the world just smacks you in the face and yeah. you realize so that's one thing I give Leila credit for yeah. it really gave me that 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 information like even now you see like Simone Biles and mm. Naomi Osaka like mm. stepping out of the these these sports yeah. 
and people are celebrating it like it's something heroic. I think it's, it's, it's neither here nor there for me. I feel like, mm-hmm. obviously, if you, you, can, you should make a decision for yourself when you mm-hmm. feel the need to. Mm-hmm. But let's not make it what it is mm-hmm. what, what it, or what it's not. Yeah. Because the heroic thing is feeling what you're feeling mm-hmm. and finding a way to push through. Mm-hmm. That's what the greats do. That's how we know. That's what separates the wheat from mm-hmm. the chaff. Day-to-day, pressure is there and these guys find a way. So when I see these young ladies, fair enough, it just, it's okay if you can't deal, but let's not make it a mm. give me a prize for not being able to deal. Mm. That's a that's a that's a good angle. You know, for me, I think mental health is something that is very difficult for me to speak on mm. because of the way I handle my own situation. Right. Um, but it's a great point you made. Let us not see. Let us not impose perfection on people. Mm. So. Um, in support of Simon Biles, if you because it's a dangerous sport that you do, if mm-hmm. you're not mentally comfortable, definitely take some time off. But like you said, you can't get a medal for taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you're taking care of yourself, and we applaud that. Naomi Saka, you're taking care of yourself, and we applaud that. But you shouldn't be the mental health poster child because there are people that are dealing with similar situations. But they are just not speaking up. So yeah, speak up and everything. But you know, a lot of a lot of what is going on now is that there's a lot of cancel culture. I've said it on another podcast that I was on. Cancel culture is not new mm-hmm. because cancel culture is what we are saying. Oh, Roy was always on report. Yeah. Cancel culture. Yeah. He yeah. can't be picked on this team because he's a nuisance. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. can't yeah. amount to anything because that's cancel culture. Yeah. Based on one thing. So it's always True. been there. Mm. But online cancel culture is such a problem because you're assuming that everybody is at the same point of of of, of knowledge or appreciation understanding. or understanding. Yeah. If I come out and I say something that is grossly transphobic, educate me. It's not for you to say, how dare you? I'm coming from a place where that's not normal. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from a place where this is not... In LA, you can can be mad at people because you have all sorts of things in LA, but Mm. if you're coming from K2, (laughs) you've probably never seen a trans... Trans, uh, transsexual person yeah. before you've probably never seen um, somebody that's fluid or non-binary mm. so when that person comes and expresses what you would call an ignorant comment you can't just straight up cancel because when you're canceling that person you're not aware of their own mental health or the mental health consequences for that mm. people mm. are losing money people are losing jobs people are losing future prospects that affect several generations because yeah. to be woke means that you are knowledgeable and anybody who is not knowledgeable should not have a voice it's almost like there's no if if you're a conservative mm. there must be um a liberal must be a liberal but it's almost like no conservative is the way there should be no dissenting voice mm-hmm, 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 and yeah. these are the problems that i have so as much as some people want to say what happened with Simon Biles and what happened with Naomi Osaka. Mm. Let's reward them or whatever the case may be. That's your opinion. Rodney and I, or Rodney and whoever, should be able to say, I don't think they should get any prize for that. Yeah. And not feel the, the, the repercussions of that. Because that's also what is stifling a lot of debate and conversation. Because mm. people don't want to speak freely. They don't want to be able to say this is what... Mm. There's a time and place for certain conversations, for, for sure. sure. But... You can't, because you have more knowledge about something, stop me. And even if you have more knowledge, what's to say that even with that more knowledge for me, I'm still not going to maintain my position. There are things that I have to have conviction conviction on or in. And you shouldn't be able to come and tell me, oh, no, mm. you're cancelled because of that. Yeah. So that is where I am on this Simon Biles. Because when you first started saying it, even here, I was thinking, ah, it's your podcast. I hope they will not cancel me. But at the same time, what you said makes sense from a particular point of view. Mm. So I think that it's very important that people don't be ignorant, but also nobody should be overbearing now. Like, I know too much. Mm-hmm. So you should shut up. What I'm saying is, in the end, right? The ultimate reward we like we need these people who are who who are on the pinnacle of attention in the world to put forward examples that help others. Because let me tell you now, it sets a precedent. 
people start to feel like it's okay to quit on anything based on mental health. And it's starting. This has never been done before. Imagine, bro, imagine if your parents quit on raising you because they felt their mental health was not in it. Like, your dad would be like, man, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel like making money to pay for this guy's cookies today. I'm saying these things matter because I want to, like, be able to show up for myself, for people when it's time. I don't want to be, I don't want to, like, not be able to, yeah. right? And I feel like things like that move the world forward. A lot of the things we enjoy, this light we enjoy, people are showing up every day. Yeah. This COVID that was ravaging the world, doctors and nurses showed up every day at the risk of their own mental health, their own lives, you get. So, while I, while I understand, like I said, I understand, if you're gonna do whatever you feel is right for you, do it, I'm not, that's not the point. Yeah. But it's the celebration of it, like she's a hero for doing it, that I don't, under, I don't agree with. Yeah. Because now, it sets a precedent where anyone will feel like, rather than trying to get past yeah. the thing, or deal in a healthy way, they can just, you know, quit. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, that's, it. it's, 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 that's, that's really it's it. Really important. Yeah. Let's take a moment to pause and breathe. Relieve the tension. Whatever you're doing, close your eyes, take a deep breath, in through the nose, out through the mouth. One more time. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Let's resume. There's one last thing I want to touch on. Yeah. December 10th. Speaking of trauma, yeah. there is no trauma that I've, I've experienced as a person, as a kid, um, like when that crash happened. So, listen, you remember that time? Yeah. Where were you when that happened? So, you know, the funny thing about that is, so when I was in, for most of my secondary school life, um, my dad was a commissioner in Abia State. Mm. And there's no airport in Abia State. So you either fly to Owerri or fly to Port Harcourt at that point. My mom used to still remain in Lagos. So I know prior to that, um, a number of times I had flown to Port Harcourt and then his escort to come and carry me to to, to Abia State. Mm. So that 2005, that very year, my parents moved to Abuja. Mm. Uh, yeah, they moved to Abuja. So it was literally, they came to pick me on that day early and drove me home mm. so as soon as i go home i slept mm. and then i woke up and they were like ah plane has crashed uh -oh. do you get what i mean and i remember i cried the whole night i went to school the next day i think two days after they had something in school mm. and i can't even quantify the emotions i can't even speak clearly on it because it's something that just after the holidays we had to come back and they are empty beds, bro. They are empty Death people on your soccer team. Empty people. Uh, and another thing that was also a trauma was just not knowing how far we'd get you, or mm. because she survived mm. it. My own thought was always, what does she remember? Was she? Did she know what was going on in the inferno? Also, the stories that came out of it about people being asphyxiated rather than it being a burn, uh, no water in River State. Mm. So there was a whole host of emotions that year and just panic. I think even till now, mm. I always remember when I'm flying yeah. locally, I'm just like... But I think that's another thing because of the family um, mentality that we had in Loyola. I think each individual person kind of was a strength for the, the, for other. the other person yeah. and luckily or unluckily we only had that was my SS3 so we didn't have to you guys had to still do another one year of that yeah. and some people two years of that um, but a lot of people had a lot of fun memories because it's a small school you kind of know everybody yeah. whether it's Ubani or whether mm -hmm. it's uh, mm -hmm. Toke or Wale and it's even unfair now because I can't really remember some of them, how they look or the experiences I have, whether it's Richard, Peter or Duke. 
these guys were they were very important to me and I think that that's just that's why I hang on to a lot of my friends from Loyola because that that experience nobody can understand it yeah. except us yeah. even people that left before can't understand it we were there we had to come back and deal with that for, for us we had to come and write Waiek in that state of in mind in that state of mind because it's not something that goes every December 10th you still remember it mm. as time goes on it, 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 it's gotten a bit easier but when you remember that this was a totally avoidable accident disaster disaster that's the word disaster. totally avoidable we didn't need to go through that apart from the Lula kids that were involved there were a lot of innocent Nigerians mm-hmm. the crew of the plane that pastor yeah pastor bimbo mm. and for me that is one of the things that led me towards public service mm. yeah because i feel like somebody somewhere didn't do their job right. or people didn't do their job right. so right. if you can just be a cog in a wheel that does your job perhaps bigger disasters can be averted so if somebody somewhere realized that let's have fire trucks everybody does their own part a lot of these things can, can be avoided so I know that that was a very that was a pivotal moment in my life in fact that, that was at that point that was half of my life now mm. so it's, it's a very difficult world you can't explain to anybody what it means to lose because of course everybody was grieving in the country but we were right in the thick of it friends with it. Let me let me give some context for, yeah. for you and for those listening. Mm-hmm. So as we said earlier, Loyola has six hundred kids yeah. at any given point in time. Yeah. Sixty died at once yeah. in a an unavoidable plane crash. Yeah. That's one sixth of student body. Yeah. And you're on holiday. Just, in fact the day you leave school for holidays the day that this happens. Yeah. Everybody remembers where they were when they got the news. Yeah. And then for the next month or so, mm. the school is deliberating where to open. Mm. No one knows what's going on. Mm. Where we're going to come back, where we're going to, whether even the school is shutting down because it was just this traumatic. Like, school almost was considering just not opening for, a, for a, an extended period of time, just because mm. of that, right? And then we get back, they decide to open up, mm. we get back to school. And it was particularly traumatic for me because this, and I'll never forget her, Ibra Ella. She had an elder brother, something Ella. You remember Akim, Akim Ella? Natasha, he, yeah. Yes, and Natasha. I think Natasha had really graduated by that time. Yeah, both of them. Were, Akim right. was in first set, yeah. Natasha was in second. Yeah, below. Yeah. So, Ibra Ella was someone I had a crush on, and I was planning on asking out the next term. The next term. So, she was on that. So that was my own personal thing. But anyway, we get back to school, we're seeing everybody. you don't know even how to you just come back and you notice the space mm. the emptiness yeah. dining hall chairs everybody had that chairs empty chairs next next to them yeah. you know in your classroom empty desks and chairs in your hostel empty beds yeah. right and then to top it all off you know it, it just became the theme of the next couple of months yeah. and terms 60 angels there's moral service with this and that and bro you never forget this you raised me up that song by West yeah. Bank. It became the song. Yeah, everyone I hear it now. Yeah, yeah, it just brings back. Yeah. And I remember those times in the chapel where everybody just crying yeah. and like the candlelight service, Father yeah. Mark doing his best to keep everything together. Guy. Yeah. yeah. Guy, like it's it's so fresh in my in my in my memory. And yeah. then as you said, catchy, holding on to hope for her that she'll yeah. survive. Let like let one good thing come out of this. Yeah. You know? So that's what December 10 yeah. means. Yeah. But I commend the school though yeah. for keeping it together the way they did. Yeah. Because I don't see like like that was a real test. If it ever was a test, because you know we had, we lost three people before. Yeah. Jamila Atta, yeah. um I forget the name. Yes, we had we had a loss like that yeah. in the bus bus accident, but that was three. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of things happen in that. People pulled their kids out of the school. Remember that yeah, as well? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of things happened in that little. Like, I remember one of the first and only times I've seen a dead body like lying in state was Mr. Polituli. 
Right. And I didn't sleep for three, four, five days. And he was a loved teacher. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing uh, Fanyo. Is her name Fanyo? The girl. Swala Benkali. Oh, oh my God, yeah. Swala, I was at the clinic that day when she was like, her head fell back. I was standing right outside there. And I still see that sometimes. Not that it's haunting me or anything. Yeah. So there's a lot that we had to deal with as young, young, young kids then. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was the this was the the peak the of it, for us to come back. Even if you were not in SS3 or GS3, for you to come back and still try to excel and still try to have that camaraderie. Because like you said, 60 out of 600 is a huge is a huge amount. Um, so like I said, it's part of the thing. It's not the only thing. I always wanted to be in public service. Mm. But it's one of the things that I felt like if I could do my job, if I do my job in public service, maybe that will help plug whatever gap that can lead to another, uh, tragedy. To another tragedy like that for kids or for grown-ups. Okay, so to, to wrap on a, on a more... Positive, um, notes. positive notes <laughs> about Loyola. I think yeah. it's always nice to like look at those unique experiences that Loyola give us yeah. that no other place could have given us. Yeah. I look at running for bonds yeah. to get extra bonds. Yeah, <laughs> bonds. Get give us macaroni and meatball. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a there's a whole lot of stuff I can be. Together. Watching Premier League, yeah, that's yeah. how I found Beckham and Ronaldo. Yeah, in those in that lecture, in that lecture hall. hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know even in terms of sports, I've always not now, but mm. primary school, I used to be a sports person, sprint, football, mm. table tennis. Uh, that competitiveness, in Lerila, yeah. and I struggled. There used to be football team A and then baggers. Yeah. <laughs> I was always in baggers, always trying to get football team A. All my guys are on football team A. Yeah. And I was on baggers. So that also has is, is, is a moment for me. Mm. Um, Mano War was dope. Mano War was dope. Uh, going all the way to Sherry Hills. In fact, I recently went to Joss mm. and I was like, wow, this is like 18 years after. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is just Clubs like Philatelia, I don't know. The chess many, club, yeah. yeah. I don't know how many school kids of ten years or eleven years old know what Philatelia is. Philatelia is basically storage of stamps. People that like keeping collection of collection stamps. of stamps, yeah, yes. basically. And that's not something that I was in there though, yeah. Yeah, it's not something like or chess where you have someone like Aris who was basically a maestro playing with Mr. Deodu. Yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of there are a lot of those things that we, a lot of things are now sketchy the longer because mm. after that a lot has happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can't I the can't, socials were epic bro. Socials were epic, you know, a lot of man, some people were more developed than others. Some people were luckier with the women than others. Yeah. But <laughs> a lot of those things, man, you know, is that my best experience is just how how close everybody is. Of course, in your set, you'll be closer. Mm. But there are people who were my juniors. I, I would say juniors because not juniors per se, but like they were lower than me. One of my good friends is Andy. He never said he was three years younger than me. Mm. Um, Shubomi Oduno mm. was two years younger than me. Yeah, yeah. These are guys that, you know, and there were people who above me I've already mentioned them, Donald, Madrid K, Hamza Ibrahim, Lamo, mm. Wasco, Wasco, Wasemiaji, a hey. lot of these people that now, like, it's as if there was never any age gap, Jonathan, of course, you still be respectful either way. Yeah. Uh, so, my fond experience is just that family mentality. I know I'm sounding like Dominic Toretto over the past, <laughs> past periods, but it's just everybody, if you think about it, no, but yeah. even we we sat down at seven doing your open mic and spoke like we have been in touch forever, you yeah. know. And that is that atmosphere that was created. Um, some people will still be snobbish, of course, but majority of people understand that 
only we can understand what we went through yeah. in that experience. And even 10 years later, 15 years later, people that are going there now, it may not be the same experience, but it is a Loyola experience. Yeah. And that is a connecting. Is it connecting? My, my sister goes to one of, I think, Premier here. My baby sister, she's yeah. like 16 or 17. Okay. And I, I went for their sports day, and Loyola was invited, mm. right? And... Loila participated in one of the relays and won. Yeah, of course. Guy, we, we, course. I was so shocked to find yeah. out we, we still are, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. and even the parents were like, Loila again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing that was happening during our time. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, you know, that's one thing that I like, really appreciate about the school that they, they really do maintain, you yeah. know, over time. And yeah. I went back, when I went back during the reunion, I went back there, the school has improved vastly. Yeah. They have like so many courts now, like yeah. Bryce, like they're just packing courts and putting yeah. it inside there as if Simone Biles is coming from yeah, there. Yeah. You know, they have pools, they have, even Danny hall is so mad now bro yeah. going there is like you know so i appreciate that you know they give us a, re- a reason as alumni to keep being proud of it yeah. and keep wanting to associate yeah. ourselves with it yeah. and um man it's been great having yeah, you thanks for me i mean thanks for coming on nice so one. Thank, you. Nice one. thank you very much and this is the young god <laughs>